Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks or Geeks. Uh, the problem which we have in hand today is that uh, we will be given an array A and a number X and we have to check for a pair in array A with the sum as X. So as the input we will be given an array A of n numbers and another number X and we have to determine whether or not there exist two elements in A such that their sum is exactly equal to x. So uh, let us understand it with an example. So you are given this array here and the value of x is 16. So you have to have two elements in this array whose sum is exactly equal to 16. So 6 plus 10. So 6 and 10 are the two elements whose sum is exactly equal to 16. So the, uh, our output should be uh, these two numbers. Okay, so uh, let's look at the first method to solve this problem. So the first method involves using sorting. So as a first step, what we do is we uh, sort the array in non-decreasing order. By non-decreasing order, we mean that it should be sorted in increasing order, starting from the smallest element to the largest element. Then we initialize two index variables uh, to find out the candidates in the sorted array. So the index variables will be L and R. So L here and R here. So these will be initialized to zero and uh, size minus one. So uh, L is the index variable, which is uh, starting from the leftmost uh, element of the array and R is starting from the rightmost element of the array. Now uh, we, we are going to loop through the array uh, and we'll, uh, we're gonna check uh, this condition that L should be smaller than R. So while checking this condition, we execute these three steps. So we check that if uh, the sum of element at index L and R uh, is equal to the variable sum. If it is equal to the variable sum, then we return one, which means that we have found out our uh, two elements. Otherwise, what we do is we compare the value of the sum of uh, the elements at index L and R with the value sum and if the uh, sum of these two elements is uh, less, uh, then we increase the index L, otherwise we decrease the index R. Now, why we do this? Uh, we basically do this because uh, as uh, the sum of these two elements is not equal to the variable sum, so it will be either greater than the sum or it will be less than the sum. So uh, to, to get the uh, sum of these elements, uh, closer to the variable sum, uh, what we need to do is we basically have to uh, either increase the value of the uh, of these two any of these two variables, or we have to decrease the value. So uh, if we check, we compare the value with the variable sum. So if it if it is needed that uh, the uh, value of the uh, sum of these two elements should be increased, uh, then we basically do an L plus plus. Otherwise we do a R minus minus and we exploit the fact that the elements are sorted because we sorted them in the first step itself. Now, uh, if, uh, the, if the uh, while loop is done, uh, it written through the whole of the array and still uh, it didn't return one. So it means that there are no candidates in the whole array. So we return zero. So the time complexity of this solution will basically depend on uh, what type of sorting algorithm we are using. So if we use merge sort or heap sort, then the time complexity will be order of n log n. Uh, if we use quick sort, then the time complexity will be order of n square. Now talking about the auxiliary space, again that depends on the sorting algorithm. So for example, if we are using merge sort, then the auxiliary space used will be order of n. If you're using heap sort, the auxiliary space used will be order of one. So let us understand this uh, with an example. So we will do the dry run of the algorithm. So we are given this array and the sum which we have to find is 16. So we initialize L with zero and R with five. Now, uh, and at each step, we are going to compare it with the uh, required sum that is 16. So that is what we are doing at each step. Now, if the sum of the elements is greater than 16, then we decrement R. 
if it is smaller than 16 that will be incremental so we do these steps until and unless we found uh, we find out the uh, required numbers so we find that 6 plus 10 is 6 equal to 16 so we found a candidate so we return 1 let's look at the code so here we have the driver function so the driver function just have the array and uh, we basically have the size of the array here now uh, what we do is that uh, we also have the variable n here which is the required sum so we uh, pass these three variables to the uh, to a function has array two candidates and if it has two candidates then we print array has two elements with sum 16 otherwise we print that array doesn't have two elements with sum 16. now let's look at the implementation of our algorithm here in this function so we have the index variables lnr so we first of all do a quick sort uh, to sort the elements in increasing order then we initialize our index variables uh, l with 0 r with size minus 1 then we have this while condition where we are checking the value of the sum of variables uh, sum of the elements at index l and r with the value sum and we proceed as per the algorithm we uh, increment the value of l plus plus l, l or we decrement the value of r based on the sum of the elements in index l and r okay so that was the first step now let's look at the uh, that was the first method now let's look at the second method so in the second method we are using hash map so this method will work in order of n time complexity uh, only if the range of the numbers is known so if the range of the numbers is not known then we will not be able to create the hash map so basically this method has the restriction that we should know the range of the numbers okay so now uh, let sum be the given sum and array a be the array in which we need to find the pair so what we'll do is we'll initialize the binary hash map m uh, with all the values as zero uh, now what we do is uh, we uh, do the following for each element uh, element in array a so we check if the uh, the element in the hash map if uh, x minus array of i so x is basically the uh, sum which we have to find and array of i is the element which we are currently uh, processing so if that is already set in the hash map then we print the pair if that is not set then we set the uh, element at index uh, we basically set the uh, a of i index of our hash map so uh, let's look at the code so here is the code for the function the driver function will remain the same so we have the input array then the size and the sum which we have to find out so we have a variable i temp then we have our map here so we initialize the map uh, as zero so all the elements are initialized to zero here then we have a for loop here where we are iterating over whole of the array so we find the we store the value of sum minus array of i in temp and then we then we basically check that if our temp is greater than or equal to zero and if uh bin map so this is the hash map so the element uh, at in, at index temp of this hash map if it is set if it is already set that means that we have found our pair if we if it is uh, not set then we basically uh, set the element at uh, index array of i of our hash map so uh, this this is done to ensure that if uh, if we find out uh, the pair and we I mean if uh, we are currently processing the first element of the pair so when we find out the second element of the pair so then uh, uh, this condition will become true and uh, we, we can easily output the pair so the time complexity of this solution is order of n why because we are just iterating over the all the elements at, uh, only once so in total we discussed two methods here one was using sorting another was using the hash map 
So the one using the sorting depended on the uh, sorting algorithm we used. So depending on that, this time complexity will be order of n log n or order of n square. Uh, the second method works only if we know the range of the numbers, but it gives the solution in order of n. So that is all for this tutorial. Uh, you can visit this link uh, on Geeks or Geeks website to find out all the stuff which we discussed just uh, which we discussed in this tutorial, and also run the code firsthand and get a feel of it. Thank you very much.